try to once again. <clears throat> this new lecture is the same as the old one. So did you understand the old one? Yeah. Alhamdulillah, khalas. Yani, this, this was a joke of one of the imams who came. And he said to them, do you know the story of Nuh and the flood? He said, yes. He said, alhamdulillah, aqim as -salah. The following Jum'ah he came and he said, do you know the story of Nuh and the flood? They said, no. He said, then you don't have to know it. Aqim as -salat. <laughs> the third Jum'ah he came, do you know the story of Nuh and the flood? They said, some yes, some said no. So, okay, those who know, tell those who don't know. <laughs> so, again, the topic is about <clears throat> the relationship between the family members. Now, if you read the Quran, which is something that we rarely do, most of us read the Quran for barakah, but we rarely ponder and contemplate. And this is the reason that Allah revealed the Quran to be pondered upon, to contemplate upon. When you pray and you say, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. You ponder in Salat that Allah is responding to you by saying, Hamadani Abdi. Allah is replying to you, you, not to me or to us, to you individually. My servant has praised me. Ar Rahman Ar Rahim. My servant has complimented me. Maliki Yawmiddin. My servant has glorified me how would your salah be but look at our salahs today there is no soul to it so if you read the quran one ayah oh mankind indeed we have created you from male and female and made you people and tribes that you may know one another. Indeed, the most noble of you in the sight of Allah is the most righteous. So man and a woman, male and female, this is the origin of humanity. Also Allah says about Musa, peace be upon him, and appoint for me a minister or an assistant from my family Harun, my brother, subhanallah. Who's the best person on earth to share with you goodness? Your own flesh and blood, your brother. And this is what Musa did. He wanted his brother to be associated with him and share prophethood and share the reward from Allah Azza wa Jal. And Allah also says, and Allah has made for you from yourselves mates and has made for you from your mates sons and grandchildren and has provided for you from the good things so the quran speaks about the family and what the family constitutes of a spouses a man and a wife children grandchildren so the only system on earth that governs everything is Islam. And this is a challenge. Go and read in Judaism, in Christianity, in Buddhism, in Hinduism, in Sikhism, in any ism. Read in any religion and find me something that has a perfect system like Islam. You will not find that. No way. It's impossible. It's a challenge. Yet still, ah, but I was born on this religion. I can't switch. Okay, stay. It's up to you. Enjoy your life 60 years or 70 years on earth, but then you'll be in hell for eternity. Sorry to say this, but it's your choice. I have no problem with that. Your life, enjoy it. But Islam gives you evidences, proofs without any dispute or doubt so when we come to <coughs> this family how is 
the relationship within the family, how is it governed? Well, between the man and wife, this is a whole different topic that we spoke about so many times. The responsibilities, the rights, being kind, being dutiful, etc. We will not go into that. But what about the siblings? First of all, the default in families specifically and in our relationship generally is to respect the elders. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, he who does not respect the elders and is not merciful upon the youngsters, he is not from us. Subhanallah. Oh, this is a serious threat. How do you respect the elders in your family, it, at your workplace? How do you have mercy on the children? Do we have mercy on the children? Having mercy of the, on the children is to be compassionate, to be kind, to be loving and caring, and to educate them. This is part of being merciful upon children. And our role model is Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, our prophet and messenger. His grandchild, Umama, bint Abil As ibn Rabi'. His granddaughter, Umama. This is the name of a female. Umama. Not Obama. It's Umama. I have, alhamdulillah, you know, yeah, I have 13 girls, no boys. Yeah, I, I, I implement what I say, huh? So I, I have a lot of children. And I have 14 grandchildren, alhamdulillah. That's why I'm sitting down. Maybe if I had less, I would have stood up and gave you a lecture, but I'm too old, khalas. I'm, maybe next year I'll be carrying a cane. You never know. Anyhow, I name my girls in Islamic names. And in Saudi Arabia, when they hear the name, they say, what? What is this? So one of my daughters is Juwairiyah. I went to the hospital once and I said to the clerk, Juwairiyah. I said, Ju? Juju? No, no, no. It's not Jiu-Jitsu. Juwairiyah. I said, why? The guy is asking me, why? You gave her the, such a name, and haram. I said, Akhi, this is the mother of the believer. <laughs> this is the wife of the prophet. Maybe half of you say, is she? Juwairiyah is the name of the wife of the prophet, the mother of the believers. Juwairiyah bint al-Harith. Another one is Maymuna. Also, gosh, Sheikh, this is, these are the first times we hear these names. We know Aisha, Khadija. That's it. Yeah, the Prophet had nine wives. Ali Sallam, he died leaving behind nine wives. So these names are beautiful. One of his grandchildren is named Umama. The daughter of his grandchild. Who is her father? I just said it, Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi'. Okay, who is his wife? Um Kalthum, no. Huh? Yalla, he had four daughters. Yalla. Say. Huh? Zainab. This is cheating. He's from behind the curtains. No, this is not fair. They are the first class. We're talking about the economy, coach. <laughs> Zainab bint Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. She was married to Abu al-As ibn al-Rabi' who was her cousin. So Khadija bint Khuwailid was his aunt. So these stories you should know like the back of your hand. This is your heritage. This is your lineage. This is your family. But people don't know. So the Prophet going back to the, before they tell me I have five minutes, going back to, I'm good in wasting time. <laughs> but we're here not to waste time. We're here to learn how to preserve and to maintain our families. So he used to pray carrying his daughter, Umama. And whenever he bowed down or prostrated, he placed her on the ground, an infant. And when he stood up, he picked her up. And this is a reply to some of the schools of thought that say, three movements in the Salat breaks it. No, it doesn't. The Prophet moved like 20. 
There is no, nothing as three movements in the Salat breaks it. As long as there is a need to move in the Salat, go ahead and move. What is the use of praying Asr for Raka'ah? When in the first Raka'ah you get an itch in your shoulder and you're fighting it. <laughs> four Raka'ah, you wasted doing this. And you don't know what the Imam recited. What did the Imam recite? Wallah, I don't know, Sheikh. Of course you don't know, it was Asr. <laughs> See, even you did not know. So the problem is, the problem is that, you no, know, sometimes you have to move. You have to do this. You have to have some movement. The Prophet used to carry Umama and pray with her, alayhi salatu wasalam. Al Hassan and Al Hussein, his grandchildren, used to mount him in salat, in fard. When he was in sujood, they come and they ride on his back. What is this? If this happens with me as an Imam leading the prayer in Maghrib, what will the congregation do? They will kick me out of the salah. You're not a good Imam. Why? How do you let your children ride you in the salat and waste our time? No, 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 you're not good. Fire him. The Prophet ﷺ did this. He's our role model. To teach us how to, te to deal with what? With youngsters. Nowadays, all what you see is too much discipline. Sit. Don't speak. <laughs> Fetch. <laughs> He's not a dog. He's a child. You have to have mercy on children. We try to t t treat them and deal with them as if they're adults. No, they are children. It's part of their job description to break things, to play around, to make a mess. But we try to have love and compassion and bringing them up in a way that they feel the love, not the reprimanding. Also, a woman used to come to the Prophet ﷺ with a total stranger. Maybe you say these are his grandchildren. He was kind to them. No, even a stranger. A woman comes with a child for the Prophet ﷺ to do tahnik. You know what tahnik is. So the Prophet carries a child, puts a date in his uh, uh, um, ceiling, and the child urinates on the Prophet ﷺ, making a mess. No diapers? No, we're boycotting. So we use towels, huh? We're not using pampers or, or these things. So he makes a mess. The woman is terrified. Yo Allah, what did you do? He's an elephant. Why? Well, he doesn't even understand what language you're talking. So the Prophet said, no, don't, don't worry, don't worry, don't worry. He brings some water, sprinkles it on the urine, khalas, over. Don't wash it? No. This is minor impurity. The most minor impurity is the urine of a male boy who did not eat solid food. The major of impurity is dog saliva. The medium is the normal impurities, feces, urine, etc. So we have rare, medium, and well done. <laughs> Anyhow, so this is not his child, but he was also merciful and kind, alayhi salatu wasalam. And he used to love his young children al Hassan wal Hussein as a man we usually find it difficult to express our emotions the prophet his grandchildren he used to sit them on their lap his lap and he kisses them one of the Bedouins saw him once he said you do this I have 10 children and I've never kissed them once in my life and the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam, who never has mercy will never be forgiven and have mercy from Allah. You show mercy to your children, Allah will show you mercy in this life and in the hereafter. And whenever he sat and ate with children, he used to teach them. This is part of being merciful. One of the companion children used to eat, and you know like children, they eat from everywhere. They go and catch the nice pieces of food from in front of everyone. The Prophet said to him, Oh, Boy, say Bismillah, eat with your right hand and eat from what is in front of you. Beautiful teaching. This is part of being merciful. This is Islam. And this is the relationship in our family. 
how are you with the children in your family wallahi i've seen families that were a joy to my heart i've seen teenagers taking care of their kids 3 4 years uh, not their kids their their brothers taking care of them taking them to the toilet helping the mom taking them out playing with them very beautiful sight and i've seen families that they were so rude so abusive to their younger children this is not the islamic way of doing it the flip side is you have to also respect and be dutiful and honor the elders and the elders are not necessarily those who have white or gray hair anyone who's older than you is an elder wallahi till this date people who are older than me even if they were janit janitors or servants of mine or uh, workers or someone that people look down at i respect them and i treat them like elder brothers to me not because i like to show off yeah, i do like to show off every now and then but because i do this as a form of worship it feels good that he's the janitor or he's the coffee boy that i help him that i carry things with him that i do things to make him feel respected the prophet said alayhi salatu wasalam part of glorifying allah is honoring the gray haired muslim if you want to glorify allah someone who has gray hair because of his age you glo you also respect him and you honor him and in the sahih hadith a man a companion was discovered killed murdered at the gates of khaybar you know the village of the jews so his younger brother he's the one who's responsible for his elder brother came with two other companions cousins to complain to the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam now being the younger brother of the deceased of the victim he wanted to present his case the prophet said alayhi salam kabbir kabbir meaning let the elders speak you he's a man <laughs> and he is the brother but because they are older than you respect the hierarchy of age so the man did not speak and they spoke and also in a dream the prophet alayhi salatu wasalam saw a vision he said i was using the miswak brushing my teeth and then two men came one of them is older than the other so i gave the miswak to the younger one to use it and i was told that no give it to the elder one even in the vision what does this teach you look at us when we go into a gathering or to a masjid or to a um, hall or in a train railway and we find elders standing and all the punks <laughs> are sitting yeah where is the respect stand up and give him your seat muslims do this alhamdulillah we we still have some in us in outside in the world you don't find this because they don't have this kind of respect so the relationship between the family members is based on respecting the elders and having mercy on the youngsters regardless their males or females so i mentioned this in the last lecture a lot of the boys abuse being a male thinking that they have power over their elder sisters and this is not true you have to respect your elder sister and some of them even sit and try to enforce being the master of the house go cook me some food do my laundry do this do that and this is not her responsibility she's doing this out of courtesy because your mother is the one who's going to do it but you as a punk don't do what you're supposed to do you're not earning you're not providing for her you're not giving her pocket money so you don't have the right to go and start to say such things so in order to have good relationship in the family there are a number of factors 
or rules that must be implemented. Number one, mutual respect. And we've mentioned this before. So we will highlight it a little bit. The mutual respect is required between the man and his wife. And this display of mutual respect cascades and reflects on the children. When they, say, when they see their parents expressing such respect, meaning, uh, my wife, bring me water. Wrong. Bring me water, please. This is very important. And in so many cases, putting little, little spices, <coughs> salt and pepper, would make the food beautiful. Like saying, honey, my love, darling, even if you hate her guts, <laughs> seriously, it has a profound impact on the girl, on the woman, and on her children. Once this is automatically on your tongue, you will be surprised. I remember when I was coming here, where was I? I was, I was in Morocco last week. I was in Casablanca. And the custom officer, I don't say that they, I, I don't say anything. I want to go back again. <laughs> so I went there, I gave the man my passport and he started flipping it. And he said, um, uh, boarding pass. I gave him the boarding pass. While giving him the boarding pass, I said, غفر الله لك may Allah forgive you the guy dropped the passport and the, 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 the boarding pass seriously and he went leaned back on his chair and said wallahi this is the most beautiful word I've ever heard in the beginning of the day till day he almost broke in, in, in tears and I was duh <laughs> okay if, if it's this much, okay, I'm fine. The guy was so touched by what? May Allah forgive you. He was touched, you know, as a country like Morocco and people who come and go and his job. Just to say a good word, it melts steel. Now imagine if you say this word 10, 20, 50 times to your wife. Honey, darling, please, I love you this and that wallahi this would break not the ice it would break any problems in communicating and this is a advice I give to you right now if you have a mobile take it and send your wife a message honey I love you or I miss you and if you have a husband do the same wallahi it has profound impact of course you're gonna be questioned at the end of the day what's wrong what did you do? But, but seriously, it has an impact. These small things we forget and neglect. Respect is extremely important, especially when there is pressure, when there are calamities, when there are problems, and you self-restrain yourself, you control yourself, your children are like a sponge. They see, oh, Dad is behaving like this. Hmm, I should be like that. Dad is always has perseverance. He's always calm. I would be like that. And if it was the opposite way around, they will be like that, unfortunately. Number two, this is one of the rules that have to be implemented. There has to be no bossing around and imposing your own opinion. What is the meaning of bossing around? So many of our siblings, they all like to be rulers. Like the Americans say, all chiefs, no Indians. Or in the army, they say, all officers, no soldiers. Because they, in the family, do this, do that, do this, do that. In my children, I have some of them who like to boss others. And they think of themselves as CEOs. Okay, you do the dishes, you do the sink, you do the kitchen floor and you do the laundry 
Okay, what are you going to do? I'm giving orders. <laughs> so this is what they do. There are people are like this. No. In healthy families, everybody is invited to contribute. I know a family that the father, whenever he wants to buy a car, he gathers the whole family. Children and teenagers and adults and his wife. And he says, I have these options. One, two, three, four. And I'd like to buy. So what do you think? Oh, this is an SUV. No, this is a four-wheel drive. No, this is fast. This is old. This is American. This is Japanese. They all give and contribute. They feel that their opinion has importance. Already he has bought the car. <laughs> but it is good that you share them in this process or procedure because it gives them importance. Unlike, do this, do that. And you allow them to express without being intimidated. Some families, the moment the child opens his mouth, he's reprimanded. No, 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 shut up, shut up. You don't know anything. Yeah, but I think, no, 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 you have no knowledge in this. Stop, shut up. And this oppressive environment and not having them uh, express their own feelings, this is unhealthy. <clears throat> because they will grow up not thinking for themselves. You think for them. How many do you know in your families and surroundings where the children had to go to college to a specific field that they did not want to? My father wanted me to become a doctor. I hate medicine. What do you like? I like to be an engineer. I love engineering. I'm beautiful in drawing. I'm an architect. But my father insisted to be an, a, a doctor. And the opposite. My father wants me to be an engineer because he is an engineer and my uncles are engineers. And, and they force their opinion and, and their wish upon their children. This is totally wrong. And take it from me. As a child, you have all the right to disobey your father. <gasps> Yes, yes, you paid money to come. I'm giving you fatwa for free. <clears throat> this is your life. Obeying the parents is not in whatever they say. Simon says, stand on one foot for half an hour. What are you doing? My father told me to stand on one foot. No, this is not something you have to obey. You obey your father in what is logical, what is normal, in what benefits him, and there is no danger on you. You know how many counseling sessions I had with men coming to me after five years of marriage, wanting to divorce? Why did you? Why do you want to divorce? My parents forced me to marry my cousin. After two children now and five years, I don't want her anymore. I can't sit, look in her face. Whose mistake is it? No, it's not the parents. It's your mistake. If you were a real man, you would have stood your ground and said, nope. But you're a mommy's boy. You're still sucking your thumb and now you're destroying a marriage of a woman of a family of Brit because you did not become a real man so you have to give your children a freedom to choose no you have to eat your broccoli i don't like to eat broccoli you have to eat this you have to do this you have to wear this you have to sit like this you have to go with us there Give them a room. I wish you did not bring your children. <laughs> now the children are saying, hmm, see that? <laughs> Anyhow, this is your problem, not mine. <laughs> so give your child a chance to choose and to have their own opinion. Number three, rule number three, family first. And we've talked about this. In this family, all members act as the family is first, we will not ever do anything that would harm our family or tarnish its reputation or any member of them just because of my own interest. In this family, a girl does not go and tarnish her parents' reputation by involving in haram relationship. Yes, it is haram. Yes, Allah is angry, but also they don't want to hurt their father's feelings. 
and maybe cause a heart attack. They value the family. In this family, family first, each and every member realize that we are one and I can depend on every member. So I'm not alone. I can depend on my brother. I can 100% depend on my sister, on my parents. I feel that they are with me. When my sister cries, I cry. Because she's my sister. She's my flesh and blood. So we're always together. They are my back. They have my back. They are my rock. And we always have solidarity among us, especially at times of crisis. We have a saying in Arabic, me and my brother are against our cousin. But me and my cousin are against the stranger. So my cousin, he's my blood. Together we are solidarity, we fight enemies. But when it comes to my brother, no, me and my brother are against my cousin. Because he's closer to me. He's me. Number four, a rule in good family relationship is quality time. And this we find in families that have a lot of children. A family that has one or two child, children, mm, they don't have that much of quality time. But when you have five or six siblings, you play together, you form a football team together, you go on picnics together, you can play Uno, more interesting, rather than when you are with your own brother playing alone, reverse, reverse, <laughs> reverse, reverse. This is boring. You need family members. And I know this because, as I said, I have a big family, alhamdulillah. I can see my children, and when they grew up, we did not have a TV set. Imagine the first 20 years of my life, no television set. What did they grow up? Bored? Oh, we're bored, we want... No. They had their own games. And they played day and night together. And they invented games, they had board games, they had uh, intellectual games, no TV. Nowadays, the grandchildren and the youngsters, they don't have this quality time. They have social media, they have iPads, they have smarts, uh, well, it's not smart, but they call it smartphone. It's for those who retard. <laughs> because they sit on it like five, six hours, they don't communicate. They just keep on watching, watching. It's, it's like a sponge. They absorb everything that is evil and bad. They can't play back. They can't say something. They cannot contribute. They just have to absorb everything. And unfortunately, with the media, with the television, with the video games, I know people that stay 10 to 12 hours of my relatives, not my children, alhamdulillah. 12 hours a day on video games. And he's a hafiz of the Quran. He memorizes the Quran like crazy. But he's hooked and addicted to video games and putting the headphones and shouting and jumping on the chair. What's wrong with him? So, no, no, he's playing. No, no, you should shoot, shoot. And you, <laughs> Wallahi, it's, it's very strange. I cannot play video games at all. Alhamdulillah, since young age till date. I cannot play video games and I hate video games. Once I tried to play a game in like 30 years ago, it's called Doom. Huh? After five minutes, I vomited. <laughs> Wallahi, five or 10 minutes, I played so tense. <laughs> I, went to, I vomited everything in my stomach. My brother played it. He started bleeding from his nose. <laughs> what is this? We started reading Ayat al-Kursi. Maybe it's possessed or something. <laughs> so I, I hate video games. But people have different orientations. Some people like this. Some people don't like that. So quality time is very, very essential in the family. Number five, appreciation and gratitude. And I mentioned this before. Beautiful words. In the family, always they express their appreciation and gratitude 
differently. All what you need is a gesture, a simple word that you do to express how you feel to your siblings. And this has a huge impact. You may not recognize, but it will come back to you two, three years. A sister says to her, you remember two years ago, I was very tired. It was my turn to do the dishes. And you simply said, no, no, sis, you're tired. I'll do it. Wallahi, till date, I remember it. Two years? She remembers it because kindness, acts of kindness are never forget, forgotten. So a simple gesture of thank you or wow, the food was extremely delicious today. For a first trial of your sister or your mom or your brother doing something. Oh, mashallah, you brought all these groceries. Wow, man, you have to, you've done a lot. You're so strong. You're so, uh, uh, mashallah, yani hardworking. These little words have the impact and effect of magic. The sixth rule is the feeling of security. In the house, in the family, we do not intimidate one another. We do not frighten one another of the consequences. If you do this, this will happen. This, you're going to do this, you're going to fail, you're going to... No. We give them a feeling of security, a feeling of uh, uh, um, a chance to make mistakes. So even those who fall into mistake, it's not the end of the world. Why? Because we are all sinful. We all make mistakes. Yes, this was wrong. And maybe it has consequences that you have to pay. Mm, you broke your brother's toy. We're going to take one of yours and give it to him. But it's not the end of the world that you have to remind him. Six years later, you remember when you broke his toy? No, this is wrong. A sin that took place, a mistake that took place, it's gone. Don't bring it up and make it a, a, a something to taunt them with and also the punishment has to be equivalent to the sin or to the mistake sometimes we go overboard and for a simple mistake or error or sin we give too much of a punishment I divorced my wife why because she did this and that no this is unfair you should have taken certain steps and stages before jumping the gun uh, uh, this fashion. How much time? 10 minutes. Alhamdulillah. Ni'mah. So, I'll conclude with, in these 10 minutes, with some insight to know whether your family is a close, tightly knit family or broken family. How is it possible to determine this? By a number of factors. If you find these factors in your family, you should be grateful to Allah that my family is closely knit, tightly knit, and not broken. And don't be deceived, deceived by what you see. Number one, a tightly close uh, um, family is a family that enjoys emotional and physical security. Inside the family, the ma family members don't go outside. Unlike broken families, you will find family members complaining to others outside. In this family, there is security inside. The siblings talk to one another. They come to their parents. Father, I did this. Mother, I did that. I don't know what to do. Give me a choice. They consult them. It's all within the family. This means that they don't have to pretend. Because in a tight, close family, they do not pretend to one another. They deal with transparency. But if they're broken, everybody's pretending. I never knew that my brother is like this. I never thought that my sister would do something like that. Everybody's pretending. But in a very close, tight family, they act normally. 
they're not afraid because they feel this transparency is healthy and beneficial and there is no depression there is no anxiety they are together number two positive support from the family and this we've mentioned before positive support is not only limited to honey darling love or the food was good um, I like your homework uh, uh, writing I it's not limited to that it is also available such positive support at times of calamities so many women come to me and they complain Sheikh my husband is insensitive when my father was undergoing cancer surgery which was very critical he was asked inviting in the same time of the surgery he was inviting his relatives to dine in our homes and he was asking me to cook food now how insensitive is this if you go to the man he said I didn't think it was that important Sheikh because he was doing it in some other country yes but you know she's worried she's busy she's on the phone yeah need some sensitivity likewise the wife is seeing that her husband has been fired today from his work and she says okay where are we dining today where are you taking me you should show him compassion that you are yani sad and you are sharing with him his uh, calamity this kind of positive support is extremely uh, um, required thirdly in a tight close family there has to be ground rules any family without rules is broken what do you mean by rules rules of engagement when to fight and how to fight is it okay to hit below the belt at uh, the belt no no this is very bad no rules is meant that in the house there are rules times of prayer there is no playing everybody has to pray on time we don't have to always say did you pray did you make wudu did you no there are rules khalas we remember remind you once twice but then this has to become a system there has to be a system in regards of when is the curfew from not going out so at nine o'clock you have to be home you don't come back at 9 p.m. or 10 p.m. or 11 p.m. there has to be a deadline for social media and gadgets so after seven o'clock there is no mobiles in Ramadan you have only between Maghrib and Isha to check your social media and then switch off the phone and put it in the cupboard it's time for Ibadah no electronic gadgets after 10 o'clock p.m. even if you have a test I have a homework you should have done it in the afternoon why delay it until 11 o'clock p.m. these are ground rules that have to be implemented so food lunchtime is served as at 1 30 2 o'clock dinner is served at 7 o'clock everybody has to be on the table where is so and so oh they're asleep oh they could not make it they're doing uh, uh, some homework they, no these are rules that have to be implemented and followed by everybody so that we are close by we have this uh, uh, system fifthly there has to be a healthy valid communication system between the family members and we spoke about this before you have to know how to communicate how to talk the moment you see that the siblings are shouting at one another they're not communicating they're exchanging swear words there or insults they're not communicating likewise with the spouses likewise with the father and his children sometimes the father curses his own child may Allah curse your father <laughs> this is in Arabic by the way this is so commonly used Allah and he's the father <laughs> Akhi, this goes directly to you yes I'm frustrated but okay curse his mother <laughs> <laughs> not you this is weird so 
they'll pick it up from you. This is not communication. There has to be healthy, uh, appropriate form of communication which requires each one listening to the other. Give them time to speak, to express, and then you can reciprocate. And finally, there has to be love, compassion, and sacrifice among the family members. The Prophet said, alayhi salatu wasalam, Inna Allah idha ahabba ahla baytin adkhala fihimu rifq. When Allah loves a household, He introduces kindness. So you'll find them loving one another, caring for one another, sharing with one another. Sometimes I see one of my daughters going out, calling her other sister, saying, listen, I'm at this shop, and I saw this and this dress for you. Look, I'm sending you pictures. Would you like me to buy it for you? Would you like me to do this and that? This kind of attitude shows that this expression of love and sharing and sacrifice. No, 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 no. You can go and visit your friend. I'll do the dishes today. I'll do your chores today. No, this is once in a week, in a month time wedding. You go and attend and I'll take care of your children. I'll babysit your children. This is the sacrifice we're looking for. It's not only me that the whole universe revolves around. I am a member of the family and one for all. Alhamdulillah. Wa sallallahu sallam wa barak ala nabiyyina Muhammad. Okay. Jazakallah khairan, Sheikh Asim. For the session number five. So inshallah now we'll begin on our Q&A sessions.